I hope you got your swimming goggles like I do. Oh, oh, now they're all tangled up in my hair because we are going diving tonight for the sea creatures in Animal Crossing. It's very exciting this time of year because it's, you know, early January. You get to play with all your cool new Christmas gifts. And I am so pleased to say that after months of waiting, I did indeed get Animal Crossing for Christmas. And so I have been playing uh, probably a little too much the past few days <laughs> since Christmas. Uh, I don't think my husband has had a chance at all on the Switch because I've been hogging it, I'm pleased to say, because it is so much fun. I never really got to play the early Animal Crossing games, and so this is really one to get my teeth stuck into, which is why I wanted to do this live stream of talking about some really cool animals that you can find in Animal Crossing's New Horizons and their real life animal counterpart. And I know Blathers, he does tell you a bit about them if you choose to, if you're not too busy, but I wanted to dive just a little bit more into that and also get some of your guys' tips and tricks for catching sea creatures because as I've soon found out, it's not quite as easy as completing, say, a Pokedex <laughs> like I do in, you know, in my Pokemon Go games where you can pretty much catch stuff year round. Oh, no, in Animal Crossing, it's very seasonal. I was very surprised with that. And so we'll go through some of the animals that you can find diving off the coast of your island or your friends' islands this month in January because there are a few friends that will be leaving the seas and hopefully we'll be getting some new ones. So, but before we do, if you're new here and you want to learn more about animals in the wild or in pop culture, because I do a variety of different pop culture videos from Pokemon to now Animal Crossing, even superhero comparisons, which personally are probably one of my favorite ones to do because I do love superheroes and seeing what real life animal is like their counterpart, be sure to subscribe, check out all the playlists that I've put down in the description below. But first, I want to give you a brief overview of what this live stream is going to entail. First, part one, I'll tell you a bit about how to dive for sea creatures just in general, because they are quite uh, interesting to find off the coast of your island. I wasn't quite sure on how to do that, but luckily I have a few friends, my sisters, showed me the ropes <laughs> over the past few days of just helping me get started on my island. Then uh, later on, in part two of tonight's live stream, we'll go through what sea creatures you can catch in January, followed by part three, where we will go into the core of the live stream of meeting five cool sea creatures that you can dive for this month. And chances are you probably already caught quite a few of them. Then at the end, I am going to announce a special little competition because I've realized just how serious Animal Crossing is in terms of customization. It is so intense what you can create on your own island, whether by doing DIY projects or visiting other islands and getting different ideas. And I need your help. But you'll have to wait until the end to find out what exactly that is and just how friendly of a competition it is. So let's literally dive right in. Um, also, really quick, bad pun. I got a new ring light for Christmas as well as Animal Crossing. Hey, Alice. And uh, I, there's a few different settings and oh, I have to reach awkwardly. But there's this one where <laughs> it's like I'm diving in the seat, which is why I went for it because it's more blue. But then there's like a really bright one, which is really uncomfortable for my eyeballs. And then there's this one, which is a nice soft glow. But I thought go blue because we're diving under the sea. And no, I'm not going to sing the song because I don't have the rights, but it's a classic tune sung by a really cool person named Sebastian. Anyways, so what you need to dive and get sea creatures. Well, first of all, you need a wetsuit. Like any good sea diver, you need one. And luckily my friend Alice, who's just joined on the live stream, gave me one, which was really cool because I had no idea. I saw it in the Nook shop and I was like, all right, cool, wetsuit. I don't really want that, but I had no idea you could go and dive. So obviously you buy a wetsuit. Yeah, it does cost a few bells. Pop that bad boy on and then don't have anything in your hands. Walk up to the sea line and go right into the water. It's easy as that. And you got to look for bubbles. And as soon as you see some bubbles, you dive right down under the water and chase them. Now, sometimes they'll be still. Depends on which sea creature you have. As probably a lot of you know, some of them can move very fast and some of them don't move at all, which gives you a bit of a clue as to what animal you will find. 
So let us discuss. Now, I had to write down some notes for this next bit because it gets really complicated. As I said, it's very seasonal in Animal Crossing, which is really cool. In fact, in the beginning of the game, if it's been a while since you played, it does ask if you are in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, because obviously the seasonality is a bit opposite than that. So, oh, wait, really quick. I do want to say the coolest thing about what you can do with the sea creatures is obviously either give them to Blathers, the cute little owl at the museum, and he can tell you a bit about the sea creature if you ask, or if you catch a scallop, a little otter will pop up. And my goodness, I was so surprised. I had no idea. And I love otters. I, in fact, I did a video about them because I love them so much. And <laughs> it was so crazy because I was like, what? Where did this guy come from? And he asked uh, if he can have the scallop. Obviously, I'm not going to say no to an otter. And I gave him the scallop and he gave me a pearl of wisdom, both literally and figuratively, which I'm really sad to, to say that I just got that pun last night when I mentioned it to my husband. He's like, yeah, a pearl of wisdom. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, so that was really embarrassing. Hello, Trail of the Wild. Welcome, welcome. If you haven't checked out their channel, do so. There's some really cool videos. It helped keep me going today at work when I was folding some stuff. I had their channel up in the background, but thanks for joining. So we're just going into now what sea creatures you can catch in January in Animal Crossing. And like Pokemon, with my Pokemon comparison videos, it's so cool to see how the game developers really do the research in just making it seasonal for the players and adding that little bit of layering of learning under what just is naturally a fun thing to do in the game. It reminds me this diving for sea creatures uh mode that I get into where I'm just really intense and I want to go around and explore the island is like playing um, Legend of Zelda, the Arcana of Time, when you get the horse and you run around the fields. That's what this feels like for me, that same kind of, oh, this is so exciting, wonder what I'm going to get, and just seeing uh, the background of Animal Crossing. I saw the Northern Lights last night while playing. It was so cool. Anyways, I digress because that was really pretty. In the Northern Hemisphere, as I mentioned, because you can divide the game obviously into Northern and Southern Hemispheres based on where you're playing, there are two animals that I really recommend you try, well, sea creatures that I really recommend you try to get because they are leaving in January. If you haven't got them already, the first one is abalone. Now you can get these bad boys from only 4 p.m. till 9 a.m. So you got to work hard during those hours. And I found that that time period from 4 p.m. to 9 a.m., they really have a lot of stuff that's limited to that time. Like fishing, there's a lot of more variety of fish during that time. Then, of course, you got to get the lobster. And they are available all day. And they're a bit fast. So do be mindful of your clicking the A button, tapping and following that stream of bubbles while you're chasing them because they are quite fast. But definitely get both the abalone and the lobster before they move away and swim away at the end of January. Now, in the Southern Hemisphere, it's a little bit opposite. They have some new creatures that are now available in January, like the moon jellyfish, which is available all day, followed by the giant isopod. Now, these guys have a very interesting time frame. It's either from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., or then 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. So the 9 to 4 seem to be quite the hitch with the giant isopods. Then there is the horseshoe crab, which is so cool. And shout out to um, my fellow YouTubers. I believe the Wildlife Brothers did a really cool video on the horseshoe crab. So definitely check them out. And the horseshoe crab, though, is only available from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. So you got to time when you go diving and fishing accordingly <laughs> and playing the game. Um, I didn't realize it was so time driven as well. And I had the time and date wrong on my switch. I don't know why I had it off, but definitely make sure it is up to date and at the right time for when you're playing. Yes, lobsters are so fast, aren't they, Alice? It's quite crazy chasing those bubbles. And uh, I do want to know if you guys have any tricks for catching those lobsters. I recently got one to go to the corner because obviously you, there are boundaries to your island and luckily I was close enough to the corner side and I kind of herded it by going back and forth left and right and got it into the corner and then cut it on the side if that makes sense but if you have any trouble oh no you've never been able to catch a lobster oh well you gotta keep trying and you better do it soon because they go in January so you better get playing on that game my friend now the cool thing, though, 
that's leaving our Southern Hemisphere friends. Sorry, he Southern Hemisphere friends. I forgot to mention that you do actually have one sea creature that's leaving you, and that's seaweed, which isn't quite a sea creature. And I do find it funny pulling up seaweed. Um, but yeah, if you haven't already, do be sure to catch yourself some seaweed, uh, which is available all day. Interestingly enough about seaweed, I'm from California, and I love being in the ocean and uh, swimming in kelp forest has been so fun throughout my life. There's an island off the coast of Southern California called Catalina Island. And I spent quite a few summers hanging out at this island and swimming in the kelp beds throughout the reefs. And it's just so funny seeing like, oh, I found seaweed because it's everywhere. Um, and also I knew someone that used to eat raw seaweed when we were at the beach. It was quite interesting. Um, that was my godfather. <laughs> he was quite the hoot. Um, but yeah, I was like, wow, why are you eating seaweed? And he made me try some. And I did try it, but obviously I didn't like it. I'm not that intense. Um, but I'm sure it does taste good. I know there are certain ways it tastes good, like with sushi. Oh, sushi. Oh my goodness. That'd be so good. But we're talking about diving for sea creatures, not eating sea creatures, Shelby. I shouldn't be this hungry after eating. Does it taste as bad as it smells? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Ah, and someone made a good point about if you invite someone over to your t island, you can work as a team, which I think may have happened with us. Um accidentally because we were both kind of going for the same creature but it just so happened that I scared it and then you were able to catch it if I remember this correctly this incident um but yeah that teamwork island uh thing has been so much fun visiting other people's islands leaving gifts um leaving what one person may call graffiti on the notice boards uh with uh one of my sisters I may have written oh awkward is that them yelling at me for sp spilling beans no but on one of my uh sister's notice boards I actually <laughs> wrote a big heart and love you and I think I may have embarrassed her because she took it down um awkward but anyways so now let's go <laughs> on to part three the juiciest bit of this live stream in my opinion because there are some crazy things about these sea creatures that I had no idea about until I was like, hmm, I don't know about this animal. Let's look into it a bit more, which is one of the main things of my channel and that I love creating content for you guys. And I'm so excited to be almost celebrating a year on YouTube because it allows me to learn new things about animals and share it with you guys. Like the latest one on the Grile, which was so cool because they are such a unique crocodilian species. But we're going to switch gears now and go down under the sea to talk about not a really cool reptile, but a marine invertebrate. Now, when I say invertebrate, a lot of people think, obviously, like bugs and things. Actually, my sun beetles are hanging out just back there. And kudos to my friends on the Instagram channel who got my quiz right, including Alice, who's on the live stream, my friend Lissa and Sean. Y'all got it right. That baby grub that I showed you guys is one of the sun beetles. So they're just chilling back there they've had some nice orange and apple but this invertebrate that we're going to be talking about is actually on the thumbnail for this live stream it is a sea cucumber now sea cucumbers they're not really like cucumbers <laughs> other than like the weird shape that they are they don't taste good although some people do eat them but there's actually over 12 hundred species of sea cucumber, 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 known to exist. Now I say known to exist because it's the ocean. There are so many things that we still don't know about it. But what we do know is there's that many species of sea cucumber and they come in all different shapes and sizes from 1.9 centimeters in length to almost 1.8 meters in length. Like that's like almost six foot. That's crazy. Like that's a really big sea cucumber. And um, they're all actually classified under the phylum Echinodermata. Now echinoderms are so cool. And you'll recognize some of their fellow classmates, if you will, like sea stars, which again, shout out to one of my other fun videos that I did. I was so excited talking about sea stars or starfish, if uh, as you may also know them by their other name. And sand dollars are all part of the phylum Echinodermata. Echinodermata. There we go. It's been a long day. <laughs> and, um, but sea cucumbers are in a class of their own. And this is Holothurodea. I'm sure I totally pronounced that wrong. But 
just say it with confidence and they'll never know. Um, <laughs> so with so many species of sea cucumber, you can imagine that there's going to be huge amounts of diversity. And like I already mentioned, the size difference between different species of sea, cu sea cucumber, they're not created equal. And I know in Animal Crossing, it's probably just for sake of time, you only pull up one species of sea cucumber. It's a pretty big sea cucumber as well. Now, sea cucumbers, they have little tubular feet. And like all other echinoderms, they have radial symmetry. And so they have five rows of tiny little tube feet that run lengthwise down their bodies. Now, with most sea cucumbers, they use them to kind of anchor themselves to the seafloor. And they do this by using kind of their tube feet with water in this weird conglomerate of um, water pressure. So they increase the amount of water in their feet to stretch them out and then release the water to contract them and then kind of propel themselves. So they're really quite, I don't know, they're quite intriguing. But yeah, like I said, most sea cucumbers, and keep that in mind because we're going to meet a weird sea cucumber towards the end. But most of them use their tube feet, just kind of lay low to the ground. They don't really do much. Uh, but the cool thing about sea cucumbers, in my opinion, and to make it more relevant kind of to us kind of humans who live on land, is that sea, cu sea cucumbers are like the earthworms of the ocean. They eat you know, the tiny organic matter, they break it down, you know, and they make the ecosystem, you know, like say our garden, you know, a bit more healthy. And sea cucumbers, you know, hanging out on the ground, they even eat sand. But obviously, it's a bit tricky to digest sand. And so the sand that the sea cucumber ingest passes straight through their system and comes out the other end, <laughs> to put it nicely, in the form of a sandy poop log. Isn't that adorable? A little sandy poop log, um, just because they can't really filter out. So whenever they're kind of like eaten, they have to, you know, eat sand and they just poop it out in a little log. How cute. Little sea cucumbers, guys. What do you know? Um, oh, you're heading out for hockey. Oh, thanks for joining. Oh, have a good hockey match. Oh, how exciting. Is it ice hockey? Roller hockey? Well, if you're gone, you won't have responded but I hope it's ice hockey that'd be cool I've always wanted to play ice hockey but I'm never quite very good at ice skating but I like to watch ice hockey oh my gosh that's so exciting um who's your favorite resident on your island Alice well glad you asked it's Sky. I got a new friend named Sky. she's a blue kind of husky wolf I think she is, but she has a really cool blouse. In fact, I think I actually have a blouse that's quite similar to her blouse, so maybe that's why I like her. Um, but also, I have a thing for huskies. So yeah, Sky is probably my favorite. I have a weird little frog, a pig, a dog. I have two dogs on my own. No, three dogs, including Sky. Anyways, I need to get more residents, but that's a whole other thing. Is working on my island. So we talked about sea cucumbers. So that's the cool sea creature number one that you can die for. And hopefully you guys have caught one. Um, they're pretty easy to catch because they don't move particularly fast um, in real life. They don't really move particularly fast in Animal Crossing, which is quite interesting. Now, this next one is the mantis shrimp. They are absolutely stunning in the game. Um, when you pick one up, they're so colorful. And at first you might go, whoa that's not a mantis, nor it's not a shrimp. And that's because it's not. They are more closely related to crabs and lobsters, which when you do hold one up in the game, you're probably thinking, oh, that's a crazy cool looking lobster. Now, the reason why I, uh, I picked this one is because there are a variety of different mantis shrimps. But the one in Animal Crossing looks to me to be more of a peacock mantis shrimp just because of the beautiful coloration and such. And the peacock mantis shrimp has some crazy cool things about it. One of which is, well, first of all, they live in the tropical waters of the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans. And I don't know about you, but when I'm on my island, I like to think I'm in the tropics as well, because, well, I like the tropics. <laughs> I like it warm. Although even though there's snow on the island and, you know, little snowflakes, it, it does seem pretty tropical to me. Ah, you caught one of those fellas too? Good, good. Or don't you think they are pretty? The colors, they're really lovely. Um, and that's what makes me think, yeah, they're the peacock mantis shrimp. And so these guys, it, they look pretty, but goodness gracious, they are fierce. Don't let their cute, beautiful colors 
throw you off guard. They are powerful hunters. In fact, they're known for a powerful punch that they do because they eat hard shelled like mollusk, um, other sea, you know, hard shelled invertebrates, and they can even eat some fishes. And so what they do is they have a really crazy fast punching motion, like I said, that they do with their front appendages, kind of like little boxers. And uh, they use that to kill and kind of break apart, break the shell of their prey. And it's one of the fastest like punching movements in the animal kingdom. Um, and it's even strong enough to break through an aquarium's wall. So you probably won't be seeing these guys and others aquariums. Actually, since it, it's hard enough to break through aquariums, well, I wonder if they'll show that in Animal Crossing. Because I imagine they're kept in the aquarium. I haven't, I've caught one, but I haven't gone and checked on it yet in my museum. Do you guys, have you guys seen evidence of that? Like a little crack in your museum wall? Is someone scratching out the door? Maui? Is that you? I think Maui might be out the door scratching to get in. Apologies. Um, but yeah, I wonder if they show little cracking in the aquarium glass. Um, that sounds terrifying to me. Oh, you haven't seen a crack in the museum wall. Okay, that's good. <laughs> you don't want them breaking out. But yeah, I imagine that's probably why probably not too many are kept in captivity because breaking glass walls. Now, one last thing about the mantis shrimp and the peacock shrimp in particular is that, well, their eyes are pretty intense. So most people, like you and me, we have, you know, three uh, types of uh, light detecting cells in their eyes. And th these are called photoreceptors, right? So we can see, you know, the primary colors, but if you're colorblind, you got two. So most people have three, but the mantis peacock, well, the peacock mantis shrimp actually has anywhere from about 12 to 16 photoreceptors in their eyes. So they can see in a variety of different colors and not only themselves are colorful, but they can see in a lot of different colors. So that is quite cool. I imagine that would be really fun as a job as a scientist to like look into things like that. Although that'd be a lot of dissecting, which probably would smell funny, but like to be able to research that and find like, whoa, they have so many photoreceptors. That'd be a cool discovery. Anyways, I get distracted easily, <laughs> as you may know from my previous live streams. That's just how the chain of thought goes, especially when I'm filming. There's hours. I mean, I not hours, but there are quite a lot of bloopers where I'm I'm just get distracted, whether it be by my own animals or just by my thoughts or by food. Speaking of food, well, not really. We're going back to the garden because for our third animal for tonight's live stream of five cool facts about five cool sea creatures that you can find in Animal Crossing by diving. We're gonna look at the Venus flower basket. Now, Valentine's Day is around the corner, in case you didn't know, it's coming up February 14th, or so they tell me. And this guy is really interesting. It's a, it's a type of glass sponge, but what makes the Venus flower basket pretty, well, romantic, if one might say, is that it involves some shrimp. Now, this is a symbiotic relationship I want to start out with because it doesn't sound very symbiotic during part of the story. But two young shrimp, male and female, are out cruising, looking for a home. And hopefully they picked the right Mr. or Mrs. for this adventure because when they go... It was Maui. Hang on a second. Maui, I'm in the middle of telling a story. Come on, man. Okay. Sorry, guys. Come on. Did you want to come up? Oh, yeah, yeah. Please hold. Thanks again to Alice for sponsoring this episode with a bag of dreamies. Can you see him? Okay, okay, okay. I gotta open the bag first, sir. Thank you. Okay, he's in my lap. He's a bit happy. Oh, that's my finger. Rude. Anyways, so two young shrimp, a male and female, are out cruising, looking for a home, and they come across this beautiful glass sponge known as the Venus flytrap. So they're a bit young, so they're a bit smaller, but then eventually they grow and they get too big to get out. So they're literally stuck inside the, their new little honeymoon cottage, if you will, and that's it. 
for the rest of their life. They are stuck together. It really does mean taking your wedding vows till death do us part a little bit more literally. So obviously they, you know, grow old together. They have some kids. But because the kids are a bit smaller, the kids actually escape out of the house quite quickly and then grow up, well, a little bit, and then find their partner and then find another Venus flower basket. And then the process continues, which to me is just crazy and a bit weird. I'll put a link in the description down below to a clip from the BBC about this whole process because the footage they get is insane. But yeah, the Venus flower basket is in fact home to a cute little couple. Now, the Venus, I, I did mention that the uh, relationship is symbiotic. Now, the, are you trying to get back out? What are you doing? He's so bad. Um, the Venus flower basket and the shrimp do have a symbiotic relationship. The shrimp get protection. But what does the Venus flower basket get out of this relationship, you may ask? Well, the shrimp eat the little stuff on the inside of the Venus flower basket, um, kind of like yeah, cleaning that luckily they clean their house. So they clean the inside of the sponge by eating all the little bits and bobs in there. But crazy, right? And the Venus flower basket is super fast. I don't know if you guys caught one. Um, oh, Alice says, hi, Nowie. Dude, he's just trying to get out. Here, let me turn the camera. <laughs> he came in for dreamies because he knew I'd be a sucker and try to appease him with dreamies. No, you're going to wait, sir. You're going to wait. You're going to come up here. Come on. Um, but I wonder, have you guys caught a Venus flower basket? They are very tricky, very fast, but very cool to catch. And yeah, they are a bit, you know, a bit long when you pull one out, but it's so intricate. And again, they are glass sponge. They are not actually a true flower basket. Um, but because of the romantic, you know, history with the shrimp, they actually are given as gifts in parts of the world because um, they are a symbol of eternal love in some Asian, Asian cultures, um, like in Japan, they might be given as wedding gifts, which I thought is quite sweet. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that is the Venus flower basket, a beautiful, you know, little glass sponge that's a nice little quaint home. Now, I mentioned earlier with the sea cucumbers, not all sea cucumbers are the same. There's a variety of different species, and uh, most of them use their tube feet to hunker down on the sea floor. But Another sea creature that you can die for in Animal Crossing's New Horizon is the sea pig. And they are a type of sea cucumber. They are a bit clear in color, a bit more pinky, hence probably the name sea pig because they're more pinkish in color. But unlike most sea cucumbers that, you know, use their stumpy little tube feet to kind of that are hidden beneath their bodies so they conquer down on the floor, the sea pigs use their their bit more longer kind of tube feet to suspend their bodies above, so like this, um, and a walk on top of the soft mud, like kind of sandy mud, it's pretty crazy to see. And I haven't yet caught one. I wonder if you guys have caught one on Animal Crossing yet. Let me know because it definitely looks like an interesting creature. Um, they are interesting more ways than one, not just in the way they look, but scientists have also observed sea pigs giving kind of hitchhiking uh, juvenile king crabs are right on their back and there's no apparent um, reason as to why they do this and how it's helpful to the sea pig uh, I don't know if the juvenile king crab kind of pokes away at any potential predators maybe something like that but it's still a bit of a mystery why they give uh, little king crabs little hitchhiking rides and uh, is that another cat oh my god Hang on a second, guys. Goodness gracious. Now you're up on the bed. Peter? <laughs> Peter, Starkey, and Tamato are all outside. Do you want to come in? You can come in. Come on, Peter. Maui, did you want to go down? Crisis averted, thanks to my husband calling for them and giving them some dreamies. Thanks, husband. Ah, oh, cats. Very fun, very fun. In fact, they've been really enjoying having us home um, during lockdown. I think they're getting too accustomed to it and knowing exactly which buttons to press. 
So the sea pig um, actually uses a ring of tentacles around its mouth to pick up and eat kind of detritus from the muddy sea floor as well. There's some crazy cool pictures online of close-ups of their mouth and just uh, it's quite intriguing to see them up close because yeah, their little tube feet which kind of dangle like woof, um, that's the technical term, woof, on the sea floor. But the tentacles around the mouth, they're just so cool looking and I haven't yet caught one. Um, so if you have, do let me know because I I need to keep diving. I need to go visit some islands and catch myself a sea pig. Now, the last animal that we are going to cover in tonight's cool sea creatures that you can die for in Animal Crossing is the lobster. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but I personally do enjoy a bit of seafood, and I have had lobster once or twice in my life, and it does taste rather nice. Um, however, we're not going to talk about dining tonight. Uh, we will cover it briefly, but there is so much more to lobsters than just eating them as food. So there are two different groups of lobsters. You have the club lobsters, quad lobsters there we go there are 30 species of them and then there are the spiny or rock lobster which <laughs> there are 45 different species of these guys so there's quite a bit of diversity within the lobsters in general which is quite surprising because more often than not we are more accustomed to two species of club lobster and that's because of their commercial value the american lobster and the european lobster which are farmed commercially um, for us humans to dine on. Now, lobster species of one form or another can actually be found in all of the world's oceans, really, and even in fresh water. So one crazy thing about lobsters, not just where they're found, but it's the females that do quite an intense job with carrying their young. They carry their eggs underneath their Abdomen, uh, abdominant, oh, why can't I talk? <laughs> Abdominance for up to a year. Like that's a really long time. I know us humans, you know, have a gestation period of nine months, but they carry their eggs for up to a year before releasing them as larvae into the water. Now you might think, God, that's a bit brutal. Just release them into the wide sea. However, the little larvae, they kind of drift about and they go through different columns um, of the sea before eventually dropping down on the bottom and then becoming the lobsters we know and love. Now, lobsters do love to hang on the ground. Obviously, they like to burrow and hide under rocks, but I thought that was quite crazy, where they start under the abdomen, and then they make their way up and then float back down. Quite an interesting uh, life as a lobster there. Now, lobsters must shed their shells in order to grow. So they, you know, they have, like, the little exoskeleton. They need to shed it, um, quite like my uh, cockroaches. <laughs> you know, they have to shed their exoskeleton, to get bigger, they molt, as it's called. Uh, and some lobster species can actually live, assuming they don't, you know, get hunted or whatnot, to be up to 50 years old or even more, which is mind blowing to me. I love hearing about animal lifespans of just how crazy ridiculous they can be. And 50 years or more for a lobster, that's a bit insane. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, and well, it, like because they need to shed their uh, shell to get bigger, they almost kind of, well, they do grow continuously throughout their lives, which is another thing that, you know, keeps getting bigger and bigger. So it's almost worth not hunting lobsters, you know, until they're a solid size. Let them get a bit bigger and then go for them. Um, but yeah, I have lobsters. There's so much more to them than meets the eye. Who knew? Oh, hello there. Welcome to joining. We are just wrapping up, actually, for the evening. We covered some really cool facts about the sea star. Well, actually, no, I don't think I talked about the sea star, but there's a video for that. Um, I'll pop that in the description down below. I, in fact, actually cover five things you need to know about the sea star, which fits in with their radial symmetry. But we talked about sea cucumbers, sea pigs, lobsters, uh, the Venus fly flower basket. Let me know which of the sea creatures that we covered is your favorite and if you caught all of them. It seems like quite a few of you have caught quite a few, which is good. And like I mentioned in the very beginning, there are some sea creatures that you do need to get in January, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, because they are going. And that is the abalone and the lobster, which is the one we just talked about. So be sure to get out there, go dive, grab your goggles, dive under the water, 
and go get those little bubbles, uh, well, the shadows and the bubbles before they bubble away. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, congratulations. In January, you get a bunch of cool stuff. But now we're wrapping up. It's coming to the end of the night, but it's the most exciting bit because I'm going to share with you a really, really competitive well, really fun, in my opinion, competition, because I get to see all your guys' stuff. All right, so as you know, I'm new to Animal Crossing. I just got on Christmas Day. So I'm just getting in the groove of finding out kind of where I want stuff on my island, what kind of flowers I want. I got really excited because I went over to Alice's Island the other day and the sloth was selling hibiscus flowers, which is my second favorite flower. And I bought pretty much every hibiscus that I could off that sloth. But there is one particular plant that I'm quite keen on and it is bamboo. And so what I would love to see is your guys's bamboo gardens on your island. What have you done with your island, if you have bamboo, with it? What, do you have some cool bridges? Do you have some cool decor? Do you just have a little bit? Do you have like it covering your whole island? I want to see what you guys have gotten up to on Animal Crossing, specifically with your bamboo gardens. And if you don't have Animal Crossing, why not just show me your cool bamboo garden in real life? I have a little bamboo garden, in fact, <laughs> just outside. It's pretty sad right now because it's winter time. But I will take a picture and show you because we got a variety of different bamboo species. And uh, yeah, so to enter the competition, it it's just a friendly one to kind of share ideas. You know, I might put a snapshot or two on a future YouTube video um, at the end just to kind of show off what your island looks like. We may share on my Instagram as well. But what you need to do to enter the competition is follow me on Instagram at Shelby on Safari and use the hashtag bamboozled. Ah, uh, love a good pun. <laughs> bamboozled, indeed. If you don't know how to spell it or how I spell it for the hashtag, do check the link in the description down below. And of course, share your photo of your bamboo garden or photos. And yeah, share away. Let me know what's going on. Uh, what cool things you have created on your island because I really want to get some inspiration because I'm a bit stuck. I'm focusing more, if I'm honest with you guys, on completing my museum. I'm diving like crazy, fishing like crazy, using my net like crazy, trying to get that museum finished. But I really want to start focusing on the island itself. And so to do that, the Animal Crossing community is huge and you guys have some incredible ideas. And it turns out I'm going to be stuck at home for a bit. And so yeah, that island ain't going to make itself pretty. So once again, be sure to follow me on at Shelby on Safari on Instagram and tag me uh, using at Shelby on Safari and the hashtag bamboozled to enter this little friendly competition. And also check out what other people are creating as well. It might help kind of spark some creative juices flowing for your own island. But whew, with that in mind, my goodness, friends, it's 8.38 already. That is crazy how time has flown. I want to thank you guys for joining me on this live stream as we went through Animal Crossing versus real life, sea creatures, what you can catch, and some cool facts about these amazing creatures that you can dive for in Animal Crossing's New Horizons. Once again, if you are new here, welcome. I do a lot of variety um, of videos on animals, both in the wild and pop culture. I've gone to some cool places like the New Forest as well. Uh, variety is the spice of life, as someone once said. So if you're keen on that and want to hang out and join the community, be sure to subscribe and drop me a comment letting me know you're here. And how long have you played Animal Crossing? But with that in mind, guys, I want to thank you so much. Have a good evening. And I will see you guys next week. We are going to do another Animal Crossing video. But next week, it's going to be on the little fishies that you can catch. Uh, I'm sure Maui will try to join in again and interrupt because he loves the fishies. But have a good week. And I will see you next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.